Hi everyone, so for today we'll be working on the solution for problem set 2 which is substitution. So in this problem set, we'll be working to encrypt some plain text based on a key where the key has to be a string of 26 unique alphabets. So the user will be prompted for a key and an input which can be a string of text. So this message will then be encrypted by mapping each letter of the alphabet to the letter it should correspond with when we encrypt it. So for example, if the user inputs this following key and the plain text is hello world, Let's see how to get the ciphertext. So starting from the letter H, we can see that the corresponding letter is J. For E, it's R. For L, it's S. For O, it's B. And so on. So from there, we can see that the resulting ciphertext will be as such, with the comma and exclamation mark still present and unchanged. So now that we understand the overall mechanism of how our program should work, let's look at some of the parameters to consider. Punctuation marks are not rotated, and the case of the original text is preserved. So if it was an uppercase in plain text, the ciphertext also has to be uppercase, and if it was lowercase in plain text, likewise, it has to be lowercase in ciphertext. So before we dive into it, let's look at the structure of our code. So first, we need to check that the user provides exactly one command line argument, this would be the key. Then we need to check that the key is a string that consists of only alphabets. Then, we need to check that the key consists of 26 characters and these must be unique alphabets. So this means that within the key of 26 alphabets, there cannot be repeated alphabets. Right? And then after that, we'll prompt the user for the plain text. And then lastly, we will print the ciphertext. So let's work on the first step first. We need to check that there is only one line argument keyed in. So for that, we will actually use argc, which stands for argument count. So what does that mean and how do we count it? So for example, if we were to run substitution, the argument count is 1. And if we were to run substitution 10, that would mean the argument count is 2. So likewise, running substitution 10, 20 would mean that the argument count is 3. So in this case, what we want is just one input, which is the key. So as long as argc is not equals to 2, which is represented by bang equals to 2, the system will print the error message. So let's put this into C. So let's start with our usual headers. So that would be include CS50, include standard IO, include string, and include C type. Okay, and then after that, we will have our header, which is int main int argc string argv square bracket. Okay. So for the explanation for this header, there's actually a one-page summary done by the CS50 team. I have put the link for this document in the video description below, so do check it out. So now what we want to do is that we want to validate that there is one command line argument. So as discussed, uh, what we want to do is that first I will just put a comment. So check that there is one command line argument. So just now what we had actually discussed was that if argc right, does not equals to 2, which is bang equals to 2, then what we want to do is that we'll be printing the error message. So that would be usage. Okay, and then I'm going to say that in the event it does print the error message, I want the program to stop. So I'll just put a return 1 here. Okay, and that will be that for this part. Next, we need to validate that the key consists only of alphabets. So based on the command line argument that you ran, we need to make sure that the second argument vector consists only of alphabets. So this means we need to run through every character in the key. And if any of this is not an alphabet, we need to print the error message. So this is quite straightforward. So let's put this in C. So let's write a comment first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just say that there's going to be a string called key and this will actually e be equal to the first argument vector. So what we want to do is that we actually want to run through every character within a key, right? So we'll say for int i equals to 0 because we want to start from the first character. And as long as i is less than the length of the string which is called key, and then we'll go through every character, right? So if we're, we're going to say that if it is not an alphabet, so if it is not an alphabet, right, for that particular character, we're going to immediately print our error message. So that would be print usage substitution key, 
right? And then after that, likewise, when it prints the error message, we're going to just terminate the program here. And that will be that for this part. Next, we need to validate that this key consists of only 26 characters. So this means we need to check the length of the string called key. And as long as it's not equal to 26, we will print the error message. So this is also something that we've done before. So we can put this straight into C. So let's label the next section. Okay, so what we just need to do is that we need to check what is the length of this string called key. So we're going to say that if the star length of key, right, does not equal to 26, likewise, again, we will print our error message. So in this case, our error message will be key must contain 27 characters. Likewise, if we were to um, have the error, we will terminate the program and that will be that for this section. Okay. So now this is the part that we'll spend a little bit more time on. We need to validate that the key consists only of unique alphabets. So how do we do this? Essentially, what we actually need to do is to check every alphabet against the rest of the key for duplicates. Okay? So taking this key that we were given as an example, so what this means is that we will start from the beginning. So let's start with V, and we have to compare this with the rest of the key. Right, so for example, when you're looking at the first character in the key, you actually need to compare it with the rest of the characters in the key. Okay, so since V does not exist in the rest of the key, we can then move on to the next character, which is C, and again we'll check through the rest of the string. So since it does not appear again, we determine that it is unique, and then we move on to the next character, H, and then we compare it with the rest of the key, right, and so on. So from here, you can actually see that there's a pattern emerging where for every character of the key, we need to compare it with every character of the rest of the key. Okay, so what we need to do is that we actually need to put this pattern into a formula so that we can put it into C. So firstly, based on this table, you can see that we are comparing the key with itself. So we can use I to represent the key and J to represent the key that we are comparing it against. So taking this example where we want to compare V with the rest of the key, we are actually doing a nested loop which we actually first saw in the problem set for Mario more comfortable. So taking this example of the key that we have, we start our loop for i starting from 0 because we want to start with the first character of the string. Okay? Then we need to compare it with the rest of the key and this will be represented by j. So you can see right there when we're looking at the first character of the string, we start comparing it with the rest of the characters of the string. So that actually means that when i equals to 0, j equals to i plus 1 because we want to start from the next character onwards. Okay, So that means if key i equals to key j, it means that there's a duplicate and the system will reject the key. All right. So this is how we actually do a nested loop where we need to check the character with the rest of the characters in the key. Okay. So however, there's one more part that we need to remember. The key may actually include uppercase or lowercase letters. So if we leave this formula as it is, that actually means that uppercase M and lowercase M will not be rejected. So we need to ensure that when we compare I with J, the characters need to be of the same cases. So we just need to modify the formula where we convert all characters of the string to uppercase. So let's just insert this little part. So now what we're doing is if to upper key I equals to to upper key J, that actually means there's a duplicate letter within the key and that is when we need to print the error message. So let's put this into C. So for this particular section, what we want to do is that we want to validate that each alphabet in the key is unique. Okay, so this is where our nested loop will begin. So likewise, like I mentioned uh, earlier on in my explanation, right? So for int i equals to 0 and as long as we are within the length of the string, for the key that we're working on, we'll go through every character, right? And then now what we want to do is that we want to compare the key with the rest of the alphabets within a key. So we'll say for int j equals to i plus 1, right? As we discussed earlier on. And as long as j is less than the length of the key, right? And likewise, again, we will do this incrementally. Okay, so if to upper key, because we want to make sure that we are comparing alphabets, 
uh, upper cases to upper cases equals to that of j right so in the event if it was really to find out that there's a duplicate we're gonna print the error message Okay, and then again, we will terminate the program. So that would be that for this section. Next, we need to prompt the user for the plain text. So we can also just put this straight into C. So let's label the next section where we just want to prompt the user for the plain text. So we'll declare that it will be a string called plain text, right? And this is where we will actually get the string from the user. Yep, that's actually all for this particular section. And now what we need to do is to print the cipher text. So before we do anything, it is important to remember that the key may actually consist of a mixture of uppercase or lowercase alphabets. So to make the key easier to work with, we can actually convert the string of characters in the key all to uppercase. So this will be done by running through every character of the key. And if the character is lowercase, we just need to convert it to uppercase. So this will be done through referring to the ASCII chart. So as you can see here, if the key consists of lowercase h, it is 104 in the ASCII chart. So to convert this to uppercase h, which is 72 in the chart, you actually just need to take 104 minus 32. So we can put that into a formula, right? Where as long as it detects that that particular alphabet is lowercase, we just need to minus 32 to convert it to uppercase. So with that, now your key actually consists entirely of only uppercase alphabets and that will be easier to work with. Okay, so now to print the cipher text, there's actually three scenarios to consider. So firstly, if the plain text is uppercase. Secondly, if it's lowercase. And lastly, if it's not an alphabet, like for example, if it's a punctuation mark. So let's start with the first scenario where if the plain text is uppercase, okay. We will use the same key and plain text as an example. So in this case, you can see that we actually have the upper cases of H and W. So first, let's put the alphabet alongside the key. Now, for us to get J as the ciphertext of H, you can see that first, the program needs to identify the position of the plain text. So in this case, you can see that H is actually the 8th letter of the alphabet, which is stored as the 7th value in the string. right? And this will be matched alongside the key to print J as the corresponding ciphertext. So let's convert this logic into C. First, we need to identify the position of the plain text in the alphabet. This is where the ASCII chart comes into the picture now. So you can see that H is actually represented by 72 in the chart. So for us to find the position of H in the alphabet, we need to take the value of the plain text minus 65. So in this case, when H is 72, we take 72 minus 65 equals to 7. So this actually gives us the information that we need to pick the corresponding character in the cipher text. So now that we know that the plain text value of this character is 7, we will move to the 7 character in the string, which is J. So now for the next scenario, if the plain text is lower case, we need to identify the position of the plain text in the alphabet, pick the corresponding letter in the cipher text, right? And at this stage, it's still uppercase then now we need to convert it back to lowercase, right? So this is actually similar to what we've just done, just that we need to do one extra step, which is to convert it to lowercase, okay? So again, we need to identify the position of the plain text in the alphabet. It will be plain text i minus 97 now, since we are working with lower cases. Then we will pick this from the key. So for example, if e is the plain text and it's lowercase, right? Then the corresponding alphabet in the cipher text is r. Okay. And then now what we need to do is to convert this to lowercase. So remember on the ASCII chart, the difference between the uppercase and lowercase alphabet is 32. So to find the lowercase value of R, we just need to add 32 to the cipher text to get the lowercase version. And for the last scenario, if it's not an alphabet, we do not need to make any changes to it. So let's put all of this in C. So what we want to do is that we say convert all alphabets in the key to uppercase first. So now we, what we want to do is that we want to comb through every character within the key. Right. 
So in the event that it is a lower case, so if is lower case, um, what we're gonna do is that we are gonna convert it into uppercase. So we're gonna say that um, we will actually minus thirty two. Okay, so now what we're doing is that we've actually converted all lowercase alphabets within the key to uppercase. And now is the part that we can actually start working on to print the ciphertext. So labeling this section. Okay, so we're gonna, this is where the output will come in. We'll print ciphertext and now we'll be working on every character that will come out after this particular portion. Right? So let's work on the three scenarios that we've discussed. So... We'll go through every um, alphabet within the plain text first. Okay, so now first scenario, if the plain text is uppercase. So if it is upper. We're going to first find out what is the position of that particular plain text. Right. And then after that, we're going to print this particular value of the cipher text out. So. Okay. Right. So what happens now? Right. Else, if now what happens if it's lowercase? Again, we find out what is the value, what is the position of the plain text, right? So like we discussed, we minus 97 because now it's lowercase. So we actually now print the particular character, right? Where we print the corresponding cipher text, but we need to plus 32 because we want to convert it back to lowercase, right? And then for all other scenario where basically, for example, if it's a punctuation mark, we will just ignore and just print it as it is based on what it was in the plain text. Okay, so um, after that, I'll just turn it up by entering a new line here. Okay, so now let's test this out. Make substitution, so it went in nicely. So now what happens is, right, so I'm going to test that my error messages are printing correctly. So let me put a situation where the argument count is not equals to 2. Right, my, my error message comes out very nicely. So what happens now if I put in multiple... Um, I maybe an argument count of 3, right? As I discussed earlier on, again, the error message comes out. So now what happens if I put um, alphabets, but it is actually not 26 characters? Again, it comes out correctly. Right. And then now let's say I put um, the correct key now. Right. And then now it prompts me for the plain text. So I'm going to just try again a hello world. So what happens now is that I'm actually testing uppercase, lowercase, and punctuation marks just to check whether my ciphertext is printing correctly. And there you go. You can see that the H and W are still kept as uppercase and the lowercase are actually still lowercase in the ciphertext and my punctuations remain as such. So there you go. This is the solution for problem set to substitution. Now, if you've enjoyed the videos, I really appreciate it if you are able to drop a like, drop a comment, or even subscribe to the channel. This really helps with the algorithm in pushing this video up to those who are also looking for the explanation video for this particular problem set. And I'll also be working on the rest of the videos for the rest of the assignments. So stay tuned and I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you.